Welcome to Intercraft channel. Many of us have experienced difficulties getting a photo engraving similar to the one we can see on the screen. In the next couple of episodes, I'm going to talk about the techniques to engrave photos systematically. In this video, I will investigate that burn time, which helps to find the speed and power for engraving on basically any material. If you have already checked your laser mechanics, belt tension and the centric knot, then the lines and the curves are not wobbly, and you can scan a square with aligned lines, whether by finding the right scanning offset or by using the right overscan amount or combination of both. Then you are ready to move to the next step and prepare yourself for improving your photo engraving skills. A process which not alone helps you to do very fine engravings but also every time the outcome is similar to what you expect and what you see on the screen. To include all the details and all the shades of grey. In this episode I'll explain how required time to burn a dot is found is the technique of finding the speed and power for photo engraving. With this technique, you will get an engraved image on your material as you expect and see its digital version on the screen. The principle is to figure out the pulse time of the laser per pixel. It gives enough time to each pulse to deliver a distinguishable engraved spot, a dot. For figuring out the size of the dot and finding the correct speed and power, it's more professional to use a microscope with a measuring feature or a scale to measure the exact size of a dot. Since everyone may not have such a microscope nearby, here we approximate the sizes. In the next video, you will learn no matter the exact and correct size of the dot, how to compensate the overlaps and engrave with any possible LPI. I've made this pattern for pixel size of a 0.1 times 0.1 millimeter. It has black and white sequences with one white space and two white spaces in between. The top row has a multiple pixels configuration which deliver lines. When we go further, you will understand what is the purpose of each one. You can download the pattern for a range of DPIs. If you need a pattern for a DPI not on this list, you may scale one of the others to get to your desired size. So, let us prepare a test file with this pattern of single dots and multiple dots lines. I've uh, imported the pattern and made five copies. Start with low speed and low power. Increase the power for each copied pattern by 1% increment. And uh, you can do it easier by keeping the power constant for the layer and setting the power scale under shape properties for each pattern. Repeat this test file for higher speed, but you should consider starting from a higher power, otherwise you may need to make 10 copies instead of 5 to get a good engraving. Next I have saved the g-code and ran the test file which covers the speeds from 1000 to 6000 mm per second. For this type of plywood, I have added 4 to 5 percent to the minimum power after each time increasing 1000 mm per minute. You may find a similar ratio for your laser and the material of choice. It helps to get almost a reasonable engraving to a study on the top pattern. In case you see that your last pattern has not dots and not a strongly visible line, try another round and increase the power further. We can see distinguishable dots and quite dark lines with 1000 mm per minute and 12 percent power. The two bottom rows of the pattern shows that the dots are almost touching, which means that the actual 
dot size is bigger than 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 millimeter, the actual pixel size of the image. At 3000 millimeter per minute, we have produced quite good and visible dots, though 20% may do a more distinct job. At 4000, you may also notice that the lines dot of the top two rows has not engraved the lines and dots detached or skipped the dots, though increasing the power delivered more visible single dots, but the still lines are touching each other. It's a clue which means we have passed the limit of this material. Let us see how the dots and lines look like for a speed between 3000 and 4000 mm per minute. It looks okay with the distinguishable dots and not attached lines and fairly visible dots in between the lines. Increasing the power for the speed further beyond 4000 mm per minute will neither deliver single dots nor detached lines. So definitely the engraving speed for this material is below 4000 mm per minute. The purpose of doing this test and on this specific pattern of dots and lines is to investigate if we can produce low shades of gray when we are engraving photos. Basically the low shades of gray are made by single dots apart from each other distributed in an area not close or attached to each other. So it is quite important to find the max speed that we can still engrave single dots. Otherwise our engraving may look overexposed due to lack of engraved single dots. To test that I have imported the ribbon of 0 to 100% shades of gray from white to black and engraved it with the settings I have found from the dots lines pattern test. I wanted to check both 3000 and 3500 mm per minute with the found settings, though increased the power 1% for 3000 to check which one gives me the dots visibility and intensity that I can continue with. It's very important to get the visible dots for even the first 5% cell. Check the number of dots inside the first cell to the left. Here I focus on the left boundary of the ribbon. I will go for 3000 mm per minute and 20% since I can see that uh, 3500 mm per minute have escaped some of the dots in the first cell. Now go back again and have a look at the whole ribbon, but this time focus on the upper boundary the darker shades of grey. You may also have noticed that almost half of the ribbon to the right has the same engraving strengths or let's say color. This is due to the overlaps of the engraved dots and lines where the engraving pixel size is smaller than the engraving actual dot size marked on the material. If we engrave a photo with its own default distribution of 0 to 100% shades of gray, the result will look very dark due to the overlaps beyond 60%. This is exactly what we are going to focus and investigate in the next episode. There I will explain how to adjust the photo to overcome this issue. As a summary, what we have been testing here was to find the right speed and power for engraving dots and lines correctly. The found speed can be calculated back to the laser time per pixel. Basically each material has its own laser time per pixel to be marked by a pulse of the laser. In case that we want to engrave with another pixel size, we can use this time to estimate the speed for that pixel size. Thanks for watching and see you another time.